company. My name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. And I'm Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. We are so glad you're here with us. We know your time is valuable. So we'll make it as quick and understandable as possible. Maybe not quick, but hopefully understandable. And we will try to be as entertaining as we possibly can for such a very delicate and very <clears throat> un, um, un, yeah, let's see, fun. It's not a fun thing, but it's, it's a respectful thing. It's, we want to be very respectful in what we are doing. Because this is something that is not a joke. It is something that it has been given as more of a gift to us than anything. Because without this, what would we not know about, Eli? Uh, we would not know our commands, like what we should do and what's right and what's wrong. We wouldn't know about the setup that our creator has for us. Uh, we wouldn't know about creation. We wouldn't, we wouldn't know about how the creation. world started. We might believe a Big Bang. Yeah, we wouldn't. We wouldn't know anything. We wouldn't know where we came from and where we have a potential of going, and where is the potential that we have to go? Out of the, the kingdom. The kingdom, and what is this kingdom that we, we speak of here? It is this kingdom is a future for those that believe and those that did the will of our Father on this earth that are accepted into a better place, a holier place, a place of peace and uh, safety. Please, well, you know, peace and safety. I don't know if that is that is where we. I don't know if that describes the kingdom. I think there will be. We will have peace within the walls, but I believe when Messiah Yahushua was there, we're still going to be at war, and there we're going to. There's going to be a lot of evil stuff going. Now, some people I've talked to don't think they think it is a symbolic kingdom to come, like a city is not going to lower itself onto Mount Zion. What do you guys believe? What do you guys know from the scriptures? Anyone? Uh, it says your kingdom come when you talking about the Lord's prayer. Where we say Lord's prayer. It says, your kingdom come. The Revelation talks about the new Jerusalem coming down. It talks about him rebuilding the earth, re rebuilding his kingdom in Jerusalem. Yeah, and there's some places in Ezra as well where it talks about a future where the Messiah will come and it will eliminate all of the evil that's going on. And, <clears throat> you know, this is, as we sit here amongst our family, we are literally sitting here with all of you guys. And, you know, we hear from a lot of you guys that you guys will sit with us as a round table and you'll discuss this as a round table. And that is completely awesome. That is like the, what we're actually trying to do is we're trying to get some excitement for the Torah. We're trying to get the youth. We're trying to get the adults. We're trying to get people to see the Torah for what it is, which is a guidebook to life. And, you know, it is something that we must understand. And we are on the 15th commandment. And the last of the 15th of the commandment was, um, Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. So right now what we are doing is we are seeking the 16th commandment and we are into Exodus. And can anyone give me a quick recap? Cade, you gave me the quick recap last time. Eli, why don't you give me the quick recap where we are right now into Exodus 7. How did we get here? So we had Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob. Jacob had the 12 sons. Joseph got sold off to Egypt. He became a ruler over Egypt. And then uh, he had all of his bro his family. They decided they moved to Egypt, and then every and then the Egyptians said that uh, Israel was getting too Israel was getting too big for them, so they decided to enslave them. And now Moses has talked to Yahuwah, and he went to Pharaoh to ask him to let his people go, and now he's back talking to Yahuwah. Yes, and so we are in Exodus seven. Now suppose, gentlemen, that that Yosef, our, our buddy Yosef, who went over there, decided that he wasn't going to stock up for seven years, decided he was going to maybe think that there's going to be some sort of a, uh, I don't know, some sort of uh, exodus for him out of there that he isn't going to have to do that. Imagine the world that we would be in today. Uh, we, yeah, sure, they would have starved to death. They would have starved to death. And so it is by faith that he was stocking up and that he was able to decipher what it was Pharaoh had. Okay, so we are here. We are in Exodus 7, and let us begin seeking the commandment 16. <clears throat> and Yahuwah said unto Moshe, See, I have made you an Elohim to Pharaoh, and Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. Now, out of the gate, what does this mean? He's going to be an Elohim. He's going to be... Basically, he's like powerful, right? He's, he's stronger doing, than Pharaoh. He's... That in, in Egypt, you have like sorcerers and magicians, but this dude's not doing it in sorcerer and magician. He just came up with the name Yahuwah, and that's something different. It's like a powerful being to him. Yeah, and so there are other Elohims. We are described as Elohim, and so, but there's only one Elohim most high. Okay, verse 2. And you shall speak all that I command you, and Aaron your brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Yashrael out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, 
and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Mitzrayim. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Mitzrayim and bring forth my armies and my people, the children of Yashrael, out of the land of Mitzrayim by great judgments. And so this is interesting. Yah, Yah says something right here. He says, I'm going to bring forth my armies and my people, the children of Yashrael, out of the land of Mitzrayim. What does it mean, armies? Does he have an army at this point? No, uh, he has nothing at this point. Like, nobody's formed. Nobody he has. What would you consider an army? A large amount of people. Doing what? Going to war. It would be in sync. That's the thing about soldiers and armies is everybody is going to have a certain command, right? It goes all the way from the top of it all the way down to the very bottom. And everybody has a chore. Everybody has a command. Everybody has something. And so right now, he doesn't. there are no armies. And so when, I guess we will see the army here very shortly. <clears throat> Verse 5. And Mitzrayim shall know that I am Yahuwah when I stretch forth my hand upon Mitzrayim and bring out the children of Yashrael from among them. And Moshe, Moshe and Aaron did as Yahuwah commanded them. So they did. And Moshe was fourscore years old, and Aaron fourscore and three years old when they spoke unto Pharaoh. How old is that, folks? 80. 80 83. and 83. So they're, they're old people. Yeah. How is this possible? I am 45. Is it 44? 44 or 45? 45. I can barely roll out of bed in the morning. These guys are sitting here getting ready to duke it out with Pharaoh, right. and they're like double my age. What's Less chemicals. Cleaner, is it less it? Less chemicals, cleaner life. different times. They weren't probably cleaner food. There wasn't airplanes going above their head, dropping off stuff, trying to kill them for like bugs? Probably not. Probably none of that. No, like... There wasn't, devices there wasn't from. Uncle Monsanto that was going through all the yeah, no. cornfields yeah, of probably, well, Egypt trying I mean, to, like, chemical. There was probably something they had, but it wasn't like that. I don't think, I think most normal people don't want their food contaminated, and if they, I, I just doesn't seem logical, but, yeah, no, they were very in shape, I guess, for this world. I mean, they were. And they probably did a lot of, like, a lot of labor. They probably was in the field, because there wasn't, like, inside jobs, there wasn't office jobs. Yeah, so everybody's in shape instead of, Yeah, like, everyone's out in the field working. <laughs> no more bubble. Shredded. Yeah, shredded. No bubble people. But... I don't believe that's true. I believe they're. I believe they're still are yeah, talk, skinny and fat. Yeah, because it talks out one of the the kings later on how uh, and judges. Was, yeah, he, he was saying he was a Joseph large. Joseph fat wasn't he a monster? No, uh, it, I, don't, I don't think Joseph was it. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I don't know what it is. He's in, I think he's in judges somewhere. But no, I think it's Caleb or one of Caleb's sons. He kills the big fat king guy and his sword completely gets. It's actually, oh, yeah, it's yeah, actually yeah, child yeah. of Benjamin. He was left handed, ben. so he like hit his sword, but he killed the guy and like. This his like but they stomach didn't find it for swallowed day, right? this sword. He was so large. They didn't find him for a bit because he was just doubled over on a sword. Yeah, because yeah, I think yeah, he was yeah. stuck in front of the door. What story was it? I think it that was uh, in, it was in Judges. Was when judges. Went, basically, I, when the children of Israel went into captivity, uh, he sent someone due to Benjamin, and he went in and like said he wanted to speak with the king. He's got great news. So the king sent all of his men out, locked the door so we could talk to him. He stabbed him and killed him, and then he went and blew the shofar on the mountain and uh, freed his guys. Yeah, wow. I think the king. I think what happened was like the king got stuck in front of the door, so they couldn't get the they couldn't get the door. No, open. they heard the king. But he locked they, him from the outside. Like, he had, yeah, he was groveling or around. From the inside. He was groveling around out in there, and they thought he was just like a like imagining things, like having an imaginary conversation or something. Because the Benjamite like jumped out of the window and left. They thought like some imaginary conversation or something crazy was happening there, and they're like, "Do we they, know he jumped out the window?" Yeah, it says uh, he did. It says I can't remember. Like, I, so I read it the other day. I uh, love you. I no, they didn't, they didn't We're find him. We're adding some stuff here. Yeah, they didn't find him with a drum. They definitely didn't find him with a drumstick. No, they found him with a sword in his stomach. Uh, oh no, he ended up. Uh, they just entered the door and they're like, "Oh wow, well, okay, he's dead." Well, that was weird. We'll, we'll find a story on this and get that clarified. So uh, let's only understand what we actually read here. The extracurricular stuff. Let's make sure we get it on in historical. Okay, so verse eight. <clears throat> And Yahuwah has spoken to El Moshe and unto El Elron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you, then you shall say unto El Elron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a dragon. Okay, anyone, what, what translation? What do you guys have? I have a serpent. Servant? Mine says serpent. A servant there, a dragon. That's very interesting. Um, I don't believe he would become a dragon. You know, Leviathan comes in between him or something. That would be a, a, quite the thing. I don't yeah, think Pharaoh would stick around after that. Hey, man, go. Please go. Yeah, yeah, stick right a now. dragon. Come take out the there. dragon with you. <laughs> yeah, all right, 11. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Mitzrayim, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they were cast down, every man his rod, and they became dragons. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he hearkened not unto them, as Pharaoh had said, and, or as Yahuwah had said. Anyone correcting me? Anyone read with me here? Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, thanks, gents. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. 
Get you unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goes out unto the water, and you shall stand by the river's brink against he come. And the rod which was turned to a serpent shall you take in your hand. And you shall say unto him, Yahuwah Elohai. What is Yahuwah Elohai? Yahuwah the Elohim. Yahuwah, Yahuwah my Elohim. Is that what you says? Yahuwah the Elohim of the Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so Yahuwah Elohai of the Ibrahim has sent me unto you, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hitherto you would not hear. <clears throat> Thus says Yahuwah, In this you shall know that I am Yahuwah. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in my hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink, and the Mitzriam, and the Mitzriam shall loathe to drink of the water of the river. Okay, um, actually, let's, let's read the next one. We'll discuss it. Verse 19. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying to Aaron, Take your rod and stretch out your hand upon the waters of Mitzriam, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Mitzriam, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moshe and Aaron did so, as Yahuwah commanded, and he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And the fish <clears throat> that was in the river died, and the river stank, and the Mitzriam could not drink of the water of the river, and there was blood throughout all the land of Mitzriam. Now, do we know a time, how long this actually happened, from the time that their, their water turned into blood? I don't, I don't know, I don't. I probably says in Joshua, I don't remember how to the time we was. How long could you guys imagine if your water here, everything was turned to blood? Uh, yeah, yeah, like we have a few days probably. To figure if that, out. you have water for the cows, you have water for the chickens, you have water for us, um, and there was no water to be found. How would, and everything was blood, and it would start reeking, right? And blood It'd outside is going to start clotting, and um, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to be bad. It's going to be. Like if you had, I said, like all the vessels, everything in the fridges turned to blood. It'd be terrible. Uh, or whatever they had. I mean, there was no water. They would have water that was drawn, and it would all turn to blood. So I don't know how they would survive. I mean, that's this was a good one. At this point, I'm sure everyone's begging Farrell, please just let him go, man. Yeah, what's these people are let crazy. Let him go, and he's just like, he's just like such a hardened dude. He's like, no. Nah. But he's, it's not even his fall. Honestly. Yeah, it's he like eighteen inches he, of hate. He became an example. He, yeah, he, he he became an example. Eighteen inches of hate. Yeah, <laughs> he's eighteen inches tall, right? Something like that, yeah. It's like a, a cube and a half like this. Okay. All right, and so let's finish off. And we are on 23. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house. Neither did he set his heart to this also. And all the Mitzrayim dug around about the river for water to drink, for they could not drink of the water of the river. And seven days were fulfilled. After that, Yahuwah had smitten the rivers. Okay, so there you go. After seven days were fulfilled, after that, Yahuwah had smitten the river. Um, I don't know what that say. What does it say, Anders? After know, yeah. seven days after were pleaded seven. after Yahuwah had struck the river. In seven days, so it was just a week, and it didn't so, stop. It kept going. It didn't say it just stopped. But I wonder if it was seven days and that ended. Seven days of blood. <laughs> that, days that's of, yeah. terrible. That's that a lot be. of death. They were thirsty people. But they said they could drink around the side of the river, so they they probably would have... Everyone's working. Uh, uh, just to find water. Israelites are working a little hard on the phone. Yeah, the animals probably ended up getting hurt as well. Okay, any commandments? Anyone in there? No. Okay, so here we go. Exodus 8. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus says Yahuwah, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all your borders with frogs. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into your house, and into your bedchamber, and unto your bed, and into the house of your servants, and un upon your people. And into your ovens and into your kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on you and upon your people and upon all your servants. Okay, so we have frogs here, it's right? quite the threat. Yeah, let's If you don't let me go, I'm going to put frogs everywhere. All right, so explain a little bit about our frogs. I mean, we have frogs that come up on our deck. They come up. They come in our house. We've had them in our dog bowls. Um, they're, they eat these the dog are, food. These are special frogs because the dogs... Uh, uh, lick them. Yeah, they lick they them and like they go really like they go into some sort of like wacky shack. Um, they're all totally whack. They start foaming at the mouth. Their eyes get dilated. They, they get are, really weird. Yeah, they get really jacked up like they're on some special trip. They're called cane toads. Cane toads. And so these cane toads, uh, the dogs used to be a little more retarded than they are. They, yeah. they, they used to all lick the, the things. They'd all come up foamy. They they kind of, there's only a few of them that lick them now. <laughs> Even then, they really don't lick them so much. much. Yeah, Panthro like came up, and he had this huge beard, and it was just this foaming, and it just totally annihilates him. So anyway, 
we have these frogs. They're all over the place here. Can you imagine life inundated with frogs where you couldn't get rid of them? Uh, oh, man. I don't know what to they're do. big. I mean, on your bed? <laughs> yeah, no, they're just, everywhere. Uh, uh, Chicken the frogs off your bed, they just become part of the family at that point. Yeah, they would probably be part of your family. So I don't know how you'd stop them. I don't know how we'd stop them. Yeah, here. especially if it rains, there's more frogs. Yeah, and the more rain. The more the frogs come inside. Yeah, absolutely. Water, when there's water, it's like a good life support for the frogs. So they're just everywhere. If they were not unclean food, I would be out every single night with a, a cooler and we'd be stuffing frogs in this thing and we'd be chopping them up during the day. They would be tremendous dog food. It'd be tremendous food for us. There's a tons of them. And you can just shine a light out in, in our yard and there's just eyes. They look at you all over the place. So There's a lot of frogs. Yeah, a lot of frogs. All right, so anyway, we have some experience with frogs. Uh, where are we at, gentlemen? Five. Five. We don't have Nicole. She's cooking dinner, so we don't have her here, but um, she has a very important job for us. <laughs> All right, and Yahoo has spoken to El Moshe, saying to El Ron, I can't think I did not do this one. Stretch forth your hand over the rod of the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause the frogs to come up upon the land of Mitzrayim. And El Ron stretched out his hand over the waters of Mitzrayim, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Mitzrayim. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up on the frog and brought up the frogs up on the land of Mitzrayim. They double it. <laughs> yeah, so um, Wow, that was wild. Why don't they like, how, like a swarm stupid. of birds or something? Get rid uh, of the frogs. Okay, so how in the world do normal human beings bring forth frogs? How are uh, these magicians emulating power of the devil? The power of the devil and some sort of unclean stuff. spirits. Yeah. Well, it says higher they're probably just a magic and a witchcraft, so Yeah, and well, I mean, how, how does that happen? I mean, is the, Black magic? Is that stuff real? I would say, yeah, probably. Yeah, it sounds like it's real. Okay. Um, so, verse 8. Then Pharaoh called for Moshe and Aaron and said, Entreat El Yahua that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may do sacrifice unto Yahua. And Moshe said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me, when shall I entreat for you and for your servants and for your people to destroy the frogs from you and your houses, that they may remain in the river only? And he said, tomorrow. And he said, be it, according to your word, that you may know that there is none like unto Yahuwah Eloheinu. And the frogs shall depart from you, and from your houses, and from your servants, and from your people. They shall remain only in the river, remain in the river only. <laughs> I guess that was one thing. I mean, he drives all the frogs away, and then all of a sudden it creates like a giant fly fest, because the flaw, you know, if you, you mess around with Yah's, Environment, you would yeah. take away the frogs. Yeah. So that was very interesting. He's like, "Hey, do you, where do you want them? You want everything, even the river? Uh, leave them in the river, you know." Okay. Yeah. So far, I was like, "Please pray, Yahoo, for the frogs to be gone." But his dudes were the one that called him up too. Yeah, like, he's like, "I bet they're like the they get up there and he throws the frogs." And she's like, "Oh, we can do that too." And there's just there's just too many. And he's just like, "No, no, stop the frogs." Okay, uh, because the frogs were brought against Pharaoh thirteen, right? Mm -hmm. Eli? And yep. Yahuwah did according to the word of Moshe, and the frogs died out of the houses, out of the villages, and out of the field. Now, again, they I don't think this is probably just all of a sudden they just dropped it dead, right? Mm -hmm. This is the power of Yah. Now the cling up begins because you these things are gonna start reeking. Like it's just it's a mess. So e Egypt is Mitzram is a is a problem. Okay, where are we at? 14. And they gathered them together upon heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart, and hearkened not unto them, as Yahuwah had said. And Yahuwah said unto El Moshe, Say unto El Elron, Stretch out your rod, and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Mitzrayim. Mine says gnats. Gnats. Yeah, okay, so yours says gnats, this says I lice. I feel like lice is just a lot, a lot more annoying. Lice. Yeah, it's terrible. Lice is just terrible. Like gnats, like you can like... We've you can... never experienced lice, but we've experienced fleas. And yeah. we get to deal with fleas quite and often. Honestly, I think I'd rather deal with the gnats than the lice. Honestly, like fleas, I'd rather have gnats over fleas, I think. I don't know. See, the thing about fleas, we have a lot of experience with fleas. And since we live with a tremendous amount of dogs, we're always battling them. They don't bite humans that often, but they do bite humans. Right? They, they um, like, you can lay with a dog that's infested with fleas and it doesn't really hurt them. And some dogs, it doesn't even affect. None of this stuff does. Okay, so they threw gnats or they threw lice. Now, gnats is going to go everywhere. Li the thing with the, the Egyptians is you see a lot of pictures, they're all bald. Right, so that would be less effective. I think the gnats would probably be like, how would you sleep? I remember another translation is locusts, like giant. No, no, locusts. and there are locusts coming. We got the grasshoppers coming up. There's gonna wipe out a bunch of stuff. So these, these there's a huge difference between locusts and gnats. Hmm. We are on Exodus. Eight sixteen. Sixteen. Eight sixteen. Yep. And what do you what did you say? Nicole's breaking from the kitchen to help us out. And 
Fighting gnats or yeah. mosquitoes. Oh, jeez. Oh, it's the mosquitoes. Oh, it could be like the killer mosquitoes, like Bill Gates' killer mosquitoes. He launched, he launched like three million of them to save our lives again. Hey, lo- thanks, Bill. Thanks, Kill. Bill, I mean. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so there we go. It's, it's either lice, gnats, or oh. mosquitoes. All of those would be uh, absolutely horrible. Yeah, I'm going for the gnats. <laughs> we have, we have, yeah, we have flies here, and the flies would drive you nuts, but having blood-sucking mosquitoes like really attacking you would be, that would be terrible. Okay, verse 17, and they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Mitzrayim. Okay, what does your guys say there? And they did so, and Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and struck the dust of the earth, and it became gnats on man and beast, and all the dust of the land became gnats in all the land of Mitzrayim. Oh, man, you know, on the beast, I mean, lice on the beast. That's that's awful. Whatever it is, it's really horrible. It's not a good thing. The beasts would be all jacked up. Um, if it is gnats or bee, I mean, they're going to start welting up, and they're probably everybody's probably welted up. This is terrible. It's not. Just let them go. Not so good times. Let them go, Pharaoh. All right, eighteen, nineteen. He's got people uh, made see, by this point. Eighteen. And the magicians did so. Oh, the magicians. Why? Oh, look at what we can do too. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth the lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon man, upon beast. So I don't know where they trying to bring up lice to fight the lice. Like, watch this, we can do it too. I'm like Pharaoh's probably just like, no, please, he's pulling. Well, that was interesting because prior to this, they were able to, they were able to do all of this, but now they were not able to deal with the lice. Whatever this is, is a gnat's of affliction. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 19. So then the magician said unto Pharaoh, "This is the finger of Elohim." And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them as Yahuwah had said. This dude is. 18 inches of just hate. Just <laughs> They're like begging him to like get all flies are all like, over him. Please, like, oh, I will not. like, please, your majesty, please just let him go. <laughs> His wife, the kids, everybody's dad, you're really look, miserable. Look, we're much bigger. There's more gnats to bite us than you got. Please help us. Yeah, 18 inches. This guy, again, from the stories in this, this guy was really short. Okay, 20. Um, and 20, right? Yeah. And Yahoo said unto Moshe, rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he comes forth to the water and say unto him, Thus says Yahuwah, Let my people go. So you're taking during bath time. <laughs> <laughs> that they may serve me. Else if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon you and upon your servants, upon your people and into your houses. And the houses of the Mitzrayim shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground whereon they are. So what does your guys say here? Flies? It's flies. It's the exact okay, same. so it's probably not flies in the previous one. Um, so now we have flies and these things are ruthless. Oh, man. They're just gross. And they, they are disgusting things. And I will sever in that day, verse 22, the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end, you may know that I am Yahuwah in the midst of the earth. Ah, this is just ruthless. Yah is ruthless. And I will put a division between my people and your people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. And Yahuwah did so. And there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses and into all the land of Mitzram. The land was com- corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. Yeah, hey, you couldn't live in a land. I mean, yeah, corrupted. Mm-hmm. It's over. Let's leave. Everybody should leave this land. <laughs> Everyone it's moves cursed. to Goshen. Everyone to Goshen. We'll make Goshen bigger. Yeah, they probably heard of it, too. That Goshen was not afflicted, so they were probably getting in there as much as they could. Probably getting Pharaoh there. Get a motel in Goshen. And Pharaoh <laughs> called for Moshe and for Aaron and said, Go ye sacrifice to your Elohim in the land. And Moshe said, it is not meat so to do, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Mitzrayim to Yahuwah Eloheinu. Wow, that was, that's ruthless. <laughs> Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Mitzrayim before their eyes, and will they not stone us? We will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to Yahuwah Eloheinu, as he shall command us. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that ye may sacrifice to Yahuwah Eloheka in the wilderness, only ye shall not go very far away. Entreat for me. And Moshe said, Behold, I go out from you, and I will entreat El Yahuwah that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully anymore in not letting the people go to sacrifice to Yahuwah. So now don't lie about this. Maybe. Don't change your mind. We've been down this road before. It's going to get worse. So, did, if he, so if he uh, didn't let them go, were all the flies still there? What, what happened there? I think the flies go away. They just like... Like like he he made, made him go away, and they like brought another plague, or it was all the plagues there at once. Uh, this is you like. Are you talking like is it? Yeah, there? is there gnats? Like, uh, flies? Is he gonna keep it there because? Oh, I, th- I think this is over a course of days and stuff. I don't know. I don't it know pro- exactly how long it was. Pharaoh's had a rough month already. Yeah, it's not gonna get better. Okay, 
Um, <clears throat> verse 30. And Moshe went out from Pharaoh and entreated Yahuwah. And Yahuwah did according to the word of Moshe. And he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. There remained not one. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go. We make the flies. Yeah, that's, you know, everybody, I'm sure everybody cheered the flies were gone. And I'm sure they dropped dead. And so now There's people are still, more clean up. Yeah, you got frogs and flies and your animals that just died from whatever bites they just inflicted. All right, so we are into the third and probably final chapter in this 25 minutes. Any commandments so far? Anyone? No. Uh, Nicole, anything? Nope. All right. Just checking. I'll let my people go. <laughs> That's right. Then Yahuwah said unto El Moshe, go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus says Yahuwah Elohai of the Ivrim, let my people go that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and will hold them still, behold, the hand of Yahuwah is upon your cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous pestilence. And Yahuwah shall sever between the cattle of Yashrael and the cattle of Mitzrayim, and there shall nothing die of all that is the children that is the that is the children of Yashrael. Sorry about that. And Yahuwah appointed a set time, saying, "Tomorrow, Yahuwah shall do this thing in the land." And Yahuwah did that thing in the morrow, and all the cattle of Mitzrayim died, but of the cattle of the children of Yashrael died not one. Okay, so that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. That is a huge problem. The whole country. Because you have huge, giant, fat cows, and you wouldn't be able to dig enough holes before they start reeking. It's, the it, buzzards just too, came there's too many. You. Yeah, it would be, you would never, ever be, they don't have tractors, they don't have any of this stuff, right? You, 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 you literally have to pull. move everyone from, uh, from in Mishraim to go help bury cows. That's literally like the next job for the next You could never do it. If you're going to be contaminated and then pestilence is going to take over you because you're, the buzzards there's, there's, and the birds are all going to come get you. Of. Yeah, and it's going to smell so bad. That place is trashed. All right. That's a lot of, that's a lot of lost food, too. Real estate value is way down. In the <laughs> time. Okay. Um, six? Seven? Where are we at? Uh, we? See, yeah, it is seven. 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 And Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of Yashrael dead. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. It's obviously, they, them off it's even obviously more. they are chosen. They have nothing's happened to them. Let them go, dude. He just wiped out all of the. You would be sitting there upon you know, starvation. That's horses you and them. like everything. Like you're, everything. That's, you got that's, that's your pretty much your car. Your horse. You're now crippled. You got no water. You got no cows. <laughs> Yeah, it's over. Okay, and Yahuwah said unto El Moshe and unto El Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace, and let Moshe sprinkle it toward the heavens in the sight of Pharaoh. And it shall become dust in all the land of Mitzrayim, and shall be a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast and throughout all the land of Mitzrayim. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh. <laughs> Pharaoh's looking at these guys like, He's oh, like, no. Why didn't he just kill him? Why didn't he just, like, Dude, charge him? Kill, yeah, I don't know. Why didn't he just... Why didn't he, like, deal with it, like, kill these guys? He'd take a spear and kill these like, people right now. Like, he's either enjoying this or he's, like, there's something up with this guy. Like, he's not mentally well. He's, he's part of he's the plan. He's enjoying the abuse. Like a lot of it. Okay. Um, so now this dude has got some serious issues. Some real boils. serious issues. Yeah, that is that is a serious I mean, issue. They're not mourning enough over their animals. They're not like boils. Dude, I've had a boil. Like, you can cripple yourself. You can't even, like, walk. Because you get a boil between your legs or doing somewhere weird, funky spots. And it hurts. Now these guys have boils all over them. And upon the beasts. And what happens to a boil? Uh, yeah, they, pop. They, 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 well, you, you're not supposed to pop them, but I mean, I guess you, you can. But you, yeah, they puss out and they become infectious. And like you can think of our cows, when they have those sores and stuff, when you pop them out, they, the flies get in there then, yeah. right? And they try to lay eggs inside of the open wounds, and it's just, it's a mess. Poor, poor, they, a lot of the people probably didn't deserve this. Well, and then he brings it, here he comes again, the magicians. Magicians, let's do this. Let's double it. Verse 11, and the magicians could not stand before Moshe because of the boils. <laughs> or the boils Were they going to bring the more boils? Was that their plan to bring more boils? Watch this, we'll bring boils too. Yeah, this is this pharaoh's a psychopath. Oh, he <laughs> wants us to bring more boils. This guy's crazy. Okay. Um, and the magicians could not stand before Moshe because of the boils, for the boil was upon the magicians and up all, upon all the Mitzrayim. Well, there's another thing uh, here in Jubilees is that Eventually, at one point, the uh, magicians got a whole bunch of ulcers. Like y'all struck them with ulcers and stuff, and like they like couldn't sit up or anything. Yeah, well, this is this is really bad right here, right? If, if this was stand for most. if this was a voting year, I don't think Pharaoh would be voted in again. <laughs> this would be a, a vote out thing. They would be compa- campaigning against him. Listen, you won't get the boils if we're here. You've yeah, done worse. You, you, we will have fresh water. Your cows won't all be dead. Oh yeah, don't worry about itching your head. Oh yeah, the cess- the the pus pockets of, of source. 
That's not going to happen to me. So vote me. Vote in the foreigner. He, his, cam- <laughs> his campaign is you've done worse. <laughs> <laughs> Build back better. <laughs> okay, where are we at? Oh, 12. 12. And Yahuwah hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he hearkened not unto them, as, as Yahuwah had spoken unto El Moshe. And Yahuwah said unto El Moshe, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus says Yahuwah Elohai of the Ivrim, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon your heart and upon your servants and upon your people that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. For now I will stretch out my hand that I may smite you and your people with pestilence and you shall be cut off from the earth. Uh Uh-oh, pestilence. They got a new Dr. Fauci. Dr. Fauci, there's pestilence coming, everyone. (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Verse 16. And in very deed for this cause have I raised you up for to show in you my power and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. As yet exalt you yourself against my people that you will not let them go. Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail such has not been in Mitzrayim since the foundation thereof even until now. Send therefore now and gather your cattle and all that you have in the field, that's left, for upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field and shall not be brought home, the hail shall come down upon them and they shall die. He that feared the word of Yahuwah among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and he his cattle flee into the houses. So all of a sudden, if life couldn't get much worse, if you wanted to save anything, they it's came in the her. house with you. Okay, now we have our what cows are left in the house. Now imagine you didn't have a house for them. Imagine you couldn't fit them in the house. Well, imagine you don't have a house or you're homeless at that time. Do you better run for your life? It's about to yeah. No one, no one's working. No one's working that day. <laughs> no, and I mean we have rain here that will annihilate stuff. But imagine that being. Hey, like, I think I've only, like ice, only seen hell like once. Ice fears come at you. Yeah, we, but these are like obviously huge enough to kill cows. So these things gotta be like the size of bowling, had like, like bowling like, balls or something. Well, I mean, you could send a baseball down that hard and kill me. I mean, there's some serious. Yeah, hit it hard enough, All right, where are we at, gents? Uh, let's see. Hold on, we are uh, twenty-one. Twenty-one. And he that regarded what? not the word of Yahuwah left his servants and his cattle in the field. And Yahuwah said unto El Moshe, Stretch forth your hand toward the heavens, that there may be hail in all the land of Mitzrayim. I think we read this upon man and upon beast and upon every herb of the field and throughout the land of Mitzrayim. And Moshe stretched forth his rod toward the heavens, and Yahuwah sent thunder and hail, and the fire ran along upon the ground. And Yahuwah rained hail upon the land of Mitzrayim. Okay, does yours guys say fire? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, he so he lit everything on fire. Everything so he lit the stuff that would burn on fire. He said thunder. Like, he said like lightning. And destroyed he said everything fire. else. This doesn't sound good. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Mitzrayim since it became a nation. Fireballs from the sky. Yeah, and the hail smote throughout all the land of Mitzrayim, all that was in the field, both man and beast. And the hail smote every herb of the field and broke every tree of the field. Big. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Yashrael were, was there no hail. And Pharaoh sent a call for Moshe and Aaron and said unto him, them, I have sinned this time. I sinned the first time. Yahuwah is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. Entreat El Yahuwah, for it is enough that there be no more mighty thunderings in hail, and I will let you go, and ye shall stay no longer. Now, we have a lot of experience down here with thunder and lightning that I don't know. It, I think there's probably places in the States, yes, you get thunderstorms and things of that nature, but we have it every day, and it comes in and around. Down trees, telephone poles. Lightning and thunder? Mm-hmm. Yeah. During, like, heavy duty stuff. Yeah, but, heavy storm. But, I mean, it's, it, is, it is heavy here, and it's like something you don't mess with. Um, it's when it crackles, our roof crackles, our house crackles. You can feel it. I swear, I can feel when it's thundering. You can, it feels like your th- the ground's moving. Everything here. So this was the kind of thunderings that Yah would know that would totally scare the heck out of you. I mean, it wasn't just like you know tapping on a, a little drum set. This he was launching, unleashing the fury. And I mean, Pharaoh's like, okay, I, I, no more. <laughs> He's probably getting his roof crushed in with holes everywhere. He's probably like, oh, I'm oh, yeah. gonna die. I, I don't know if so much they would have had ten roofs or what they had. Even ten roofs Some when you clay send or something, maybe wood know. trees, maybe whatever comes down is still. I mean, it could even go through ten if it's fast enough. All right, so here we are. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. And Moshe said unto them, unto him, as soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands. Unto El Yahuwah, and the thunder shall cease. 
neither shall there be any more hail, that you may know how that the earth is Yahuwah's. But as for you and your servants, I know that ye will not fear Yahuwah Elohim. And the flax and the barley was smitten, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was bold. What did your guy say? Flax, flax was in bud. Okay, so it was in season. It trashed all their food. Now they got no food. That sucks, man. Yeah. No cows, no, no food, grain, no nothing. Water. They got more dead carcasses than they can deal with. They lost every bit of food they and had. it's not over yet. 32. But the wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. And Moshe went out of the city from Pharaoh and spread abroad his hands unto El Yahuwah. And the thunders and hail ceased, and the rain was not poured upon the earth. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased, it had he sinned yet more, and hardened his heart, he and his servants. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. Neither would he let the children of Yashrael go, as Yahuwah had spoken by Moshe. You know, if I was Moses, I would have had the slowest walk out of the city. But I don't know how he's walking out without getting hit by hail, right? He's got an umbrella. He's probably protected. He's got a super umbrella or something. Yeah, sorry if that made a bunch of noise. I hope that didn't make noise in that recording. Okay, so that is the end of it. Does anyone have any commandments? Did we find anything? No. Nothing. Anything at all? Nothing. Okay, so we have three chapters there. There's still no commandments. So these are the mighty, mighty um, ball and chain commandments that the Christians are so scared of. I, so far, I haven't really found a lot. Like this, the oppression that they speak of, I have not yet found. Anyone? We're getting there. Mm-hmm. Are we getting there? I think, like a I think more, I know. More I think chapters we'll twelve. Just... I think we talk a lot about Passover. Okay, so let's get. Hopefully, we'll have something coming up. And this is our goal and mission on this segment: is not just to read these, but to identify the commandments that apply to us and our lives today that we can keep, that we can get in the walk with the Yahuwah, and that we can live by. Uh, gentlemen, do you guys have anything else? Read, Read your Bibles. We will see you guys on Thursday for our youth, youth video. Yep. And Usually around 6 o'clock. Nicole, did you have something on Judges or something? No. Okay. Just Judges 3. Judges 3 was that previous story That was of, the story of the... Uh, not Jehoshaphat. No, the <laughs> large guy. It's Ehud. 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 <laughs> that, that's the uh, Benjamite. Ehud broke the scales, right? No, 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 Ehud broke the dude that broke the scales. Oh, Ehud is the killer. Yeah. He's the guy. He's the sniper. Yeah. Right? Who's the king? No. Yeah. When Ehud had gone out, yeah. Okay, so who's the king? So the king was... Who's the king? The king was dead, but say, like, <laughs> what was that before years. that? So that's what we're finding out. Okay. Yeah, we also time. have a Telegram group for a youth that wants to learn, chat, and hang out. We do have a, chat, a Telegram group. Yeah. Eglon? Eglon? Uh, we're looking here. King of oh, Moab. Eglon. Uh, Israelites served Eglon, king of Moab, 18 years. King of <laughs> he, he's a big heavy eater. Hit a lot of buffets. Eglon. Okay. Hey, what's king? Yeah, so it's right. We do have a Telegram group. We, um, If you guys want to join the youth, the kids, the, the not the kids, but the young men, we'll see you guys and the other youth on Thursday. And um, I think that's it. Does anyone right. have anything else? That's it. Shalom. Stay in the word. Shalom. Yeah, stay in the word. All right. Much love, everyone.